What's going on, guys? It's your boy Hatter, FFL Commissioner, with the one and only, the legendary, the your fancy analyst, the the top of that top class, Adam Rank. Man, how you doing, brother? Well, that's a little too kind, but uh, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, being on with you. I uh, I've been looking forward to this, and so uh, I, I'm I'm ready to chop up some fantasy football with you. I'm telling you, I mean, dude, I mean. Uh, you know it's a fantasy page i mean we gotta you know you know you have to be the first one on here to talk about fantasy and you know i texted you last night and i was like man look man i gotta add adam on there man so do it you oh when say, hatter when when hatter text i'm like let's do it tomorrow like i'm ready we're gonna i would have done it i would have i would have done it right there but i'm like i had other obligations but I'm yeah first thing hey man you my dude man so how, how's everything going man how's uh you know, how's life and the off, you know, our off season, you know, our mock draft off season. How's that going? You know, it's funny. Once that July 4th holiday hits, when you get back, I have some people go out of town, whatever you do. Yeah. Once those hot dog wrappers have been thrown away and you've swept up the fireworks, it's time right. to get started with some fantasy football. I'm currently finishing up my state of the franchise feature for the NFL.com. Right. It's a little bit later. We're finishing a little bit later than usual. So for sure. I've, you know, I'm still in it. I'm still mindful of it. I've done some of the mock drafts for Scott Fishbowl. Uh, right. I will be doing a draft on July 15th, depending on when you're listening to this. Gotcha. And so uh, that's my first official one out of the book. So we're ready. We're here. We're ready to go. How are you? When When is your prep? Like, when do you so, feel like you really lock in? Uh, so, you know, obviously, like you, like you were saying, after July 4th, it's time to, you know, it's time to jot the names down, you know, jot these people, you know, all the players, what they're doing, you know, you know, on their, you know, free time, you know, make sure they're not getting any trouble, you know, staying to the routine, you know, eating healthy, not not being in the McDonald's drive through stuff like that. So, you know, I try to do, you know, I try to do my, uh, you know, searching up. But um, but yeah, man, after July 4th. It, you know, I just got uh, with my league. I just did the uh, the pick selection. So so I got a 12 man league. So, you know, it's a spinner wheel. We put the names down. You know, it is what it is. You get picked 12. You're picking 12, you know, 12th pick and all that. So you tell me, man, what do you think about being the first pick and being the 12th pick? Because if you're the first pick, yes, you get that name, but you got to wait around almost over 20 picks, man. So how do you how do you go about that? I'm sure you were I'm sure 12th pick at one point point and one first pick at one point so how do you go about that you know it's funny i know that you do the spinner wheel i will let everybody i'm gonna i'm gonna pitch my cameo because i i do cameos for people where i pick the draft order and okay. i actually put in, i actually put in some time and effort i will make right. sure that like i have them give me the list of names i go give me a sentence or two on everybody like when you're when you're hosting stand-up like give me your give me your credentials you know what i'm saying right. give me your uh you know give me your credits as they would say right, so right. i do that I think that's a fun way to do it. I always prefer, I really do actually prefer to be in the front of the draft. And right. I think this season, my favorite position is drafting from the two hole. Cause I don't want to have to pick between CMC and Justin right. Jefferson. My heart tells me Justin Jefferson, but it's really hard. It's very difficult. I have a photo of my daughter on right. my phone right. and uh, CMC I'm blocking it, but oh, CMC CMC one time I was doing an interview with him and that picture right. popped up. He's like, Oh, is that your daughter? Right. I said, yeah. He's like, oh, she's cute. And I'm like, you're my favorite player of all time now. I can never hey, go against you. I think you got to do a CMC <laughs> now, man. I mean, obviously. Right. I mean, if, if you are in a PPR league. Um, yeah, even half point. You know, it doesn't. Yeah, he's it, too incredible. Matter, because CMC is that guy, right? I mean, yeah. he catches and he runs, right? So it's like, you know. You know, Justin Jefferson's that dude, but I mean, I feel like Ad, you know, you know, Addison coming in there, um, and, you know. and we're still relying on Kirk Cousins. Oh, ultimately. yeah. Ultimately, so know, I'm like, so, God. Exactly. You know, Kirk's. You know, he he's. Uh, you know, he's my dude, but uh, you know, I don't. I don't really know. You know, what's gonna happen with Justin Jefferson's workload with Addison in there? I mean, Addison is no joke now. So yeah. I mean, you know, KJ Osborne was. And KJ, uh, I was going to say KJ Osborne's actually played pretty well at times oh, yeah. too. So and I don't last, think that I I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. Like not drafting him, like we're not avoiding Justin Jefferson. But when you're picking between the top two guys, which is what we're talking about right here, right. those those thin margins uh, can mean the difference of why you should go with one guy over the other. I think I would actually prefer to have Christian McCaffrey. I love picking in that number one hole, and then also I love the back to back like. I don't think 12 is a detriment. I think seventh yeah. or eighth is always kind of worse because right. you usually, you typically have a very tough decision 
exactly. at seven or eight. Right. And the two guys that you're choosing between that second guy's not coming around. Like you're, exactly. you're, you're not getting him. Right. But when you're picking 12th, even if you're picking 11th, you're like, okay, well, when you're picking 11th, you can at least be like, I've got four guys. I right. need to have four guys that I want. I will be guaranteed to. And obviously at 12, that's why I, I kind of prefer 11 a little bit more. Like even if you miss out on one of your guys, you're fine. But right. I still love taking crazy swings on guys. And I like overdrafting, which right. is why the number one pick always seems to work out for me. Exactly. And I'll look for somebody like, I mean, Garrett Wilson is probably going to fall to you at that turn. So, right. you know, depending on what other wide receiver that you get, you're like, okay, I get him, I get Garrett Wilson. Like, okay, I feel pretty good. I'm on Ross St. Brown. Garrett Wilson. I've seen that in a couple of my mocks. I don't know how feasible that is because right. it feels like anytime we go online and hater, I'm sure that you see this is like anytime I could post any mock draft, right? People that, that guy would never be there in my league. Never, <laughs> not, never. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm like, bro. Christian, Christian McCaffrey wouldn't even be number one in my, I'm like, shut up. Like, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm telling I mean, I totally agree on that. I mean, and even on, you know, speaking of, about that, I mean, some of these guys um, coming at 12th, like it's like Hill and, and, you know, yeah. Gary Wilson, I guarantee he's going to be gone. Uh, yeah, he, that's probably, that's he, probably he's yeah. gone by 12th. I'll tell you that. But um, is that right? He, You've been seeing that? I've been seeing that. And I okay. mean, you know what Aaron Rodgers on there? I mean, I, team. listen, I, I'm, I feel terrible having right. to be the person to tell everybody like, Hey, Aaron Rodgers is pretty good. I mean, no, I'm like, this is the exact same situation that, Peyton Manning walked into and then people right. be like, well, there's Russell Wilson. I'm like, okay, fine. Let's talk about Peyton Manning. Let's talk about Tom Brady. Let's talk about Matthew Stafford. All these guys. I, I think that Russell Wilson ends up being the outlier. I think right. that you can count on these franchise quarterbacks coming into a new situation, especially, you know what? Aaron Rodgers is joining a team where his guy, Nathaniel Hackett is there. Yep. Like they know each other. They've worked together. Correct. Disregard what happened in Denver. It doesn't exactly. matter. Exactly. He works with Aaron Rodgers. You got Garrett Wilson. You got Alan Lazard there. Brees Hall. They're right. in the mix for Dalvin Cook. They're, they're going to be a very good offensive team, and everybody's just sleeping on it. And I did a Jets prediction video, which was yep. produced, uh, which was uh, on Total Access on Tuesday, whatever the Hard Knocks uh, announcement came out. Right. And everybody's like, why are you overrating the Jets? I'm like, the Jets were what, seven and three last? They were coming off a huge win. They, I believe they beat Buffalo. Exactly. Or what are they, yeah, I remember what are they, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, but they were playing with Zach Wilson. Like, they're, trust me, there's an upgrade from Aaron Rod. Now, it's so, like, for years. I mean, Mike people, White was doing his thing, though, the last couple of weeks, but. He's fine. He's, he's not Aaron Rodgers, brother. He's, but he, but that even goes yeah. to show you, like they yep. were playing so well with Mike White, who is a fine player. I think it goes kind of under. It's been going under the radar that exactly. he's the backup in Miami. Like yeah, I, I mean, love, I love. Mike White was he note. was slinging it. He was slinging it to and, the point. Yeah, to the point of like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you. Off. I mean, I do mean to cut you off because I'm doing it, but. You had a rank, man. You can cut me off, bro. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> yep. But but if you're in those two quarterback leagues, which I know have been all the rage, the super flex and everything like that, I've sneakily been adding Mike White. I don't want to root against Tua. I have Tua in a lot of spaces as my number two quarterback, right. but I make sure that I have Mike White because I'm like, if Mike White has to play games this year, I'm right. very com very confident. And he would be a tremendous DFS guy if he ever gets the opportunity, especially in Miami with a better situation. Exactly. I think, uh, you know, he got the he got the foundation there. You know, Mike White does. You know, he got, you know, Hill. You got, you know, Waddle. You, you, the foundation is definitely there. And, uh, you know, let's go back. You know, Stafford coming into, uh, you know, Los Angeles. I mean, look at Cooper Cup's production, right? Yeah. The last two years, right? You, I'm not going to say this is the same scenario, but Aaron Rodgers being now in the Jets, bro. Come on now. Yes. Garrett, Garrett Wilson is the new vibe right now. And I definitely guarantee, uh, even in your, in my league, because, you know, we got a bunch of dogs in there, right? Yeah. He's going to be gone. I mean, especially on the 12-man league, he's gone before 12th pick. And I feel like Tariq Hill is, you know, sliding – away from the 12 because you know the stuff that's going on offside you know you know you know you know off the field it's kind of you know a person who's on a 12th pick right now he might you know oh no no hesitation no hesitation for me i think tyreek hill was way too good last season what was his air yards 
It was like 21.2. Oh, yeah. Like it's so yeah. ridiculous Definitely. that if I was, if, if I was sitting at 12 and I was presented an opportunity to take Garrett Wilson and Tyreek Hill, I feel very right. comfortable moving right. forward, starting to look at one of the running backs. Like I think that you can end up with one of the Seattle running backs in that spot and right. then be able to fill that out later. But I love getting those two. I love, I love Garrett Wilson. I'm, I'm completely in on him. I mean, it's kind of weird though. I mean, man, B. John Robinson up like top five on, on the, on the draft board on the a lot draft. of what's a up lot with of that? a lot of faith. You know, there's a I lot. Mean, I, I, I'm not avoiding him. Like in my yeah. dynasty league, did I take him first overall? I certainly did. Right. But when I'm looking at redraft, especially redraft, there's no way. Like I'm not, not why, like. Why do you talk yourself into things like this? Like last year, I made the mistake of going right. all in on Kyle Pitts. Coming right. off a thousand, the process I feel was correct coming off a thousand yard season. Marcus Mariota, Delaney Walker had great chemistry in Tennessee. Arthur Smith was their coach. It made too much sense. Right. Now we're walking ourselves into this situation again. And I, I like the Falcons offense. Right. I think that. I, I, if I was going to have somebody that I really feel like I have to have this season, I still like Kyle Pitts. That not was I think Drake London is yeah. the guy that you actually want. Uh, instead of taking Bijan Robinson fifth overall, why don't you wait a little bit? Get Drake, get right. Drake London. You still got a piece of that offense. You're going to be just fine. And maybe it's just you know maybe the system's just updating. Maybe it might just be a I don't know a glitch or something because ain't no way you know you and me we putting mad money down right. I mean yeah. there's no way in the first round. You know, you got this boy up top five and you're going to be drafting him. I mean, no. I mean, I'm just like, I'm like, man, is this mock draft okay? Or, you know, is something hacked in here or something like that? Because People that's definitely going to happen. I mean, yeah. I mean, the faith is there. But, I mean, we need to, you know, obviously you and me, we need to see proof, right? We need to see yeah. proof that, hey, that's going to definitely happen. But, um, man, what you what you think, man? Like, man, if it's a PPR league, right, Um, and what what – receivers are you mm. trying to aim for this year you could be just three receivers man what, what are you trying to what do you think the three receivers this year that that you're trying to aim for in a in a ppr league well we i think we kind of knocked off two of them with uh oh, definitely. actually no because i'm talking about tyreek hill garrett wilson and uh drake london but let me pull up my list right now okay this, this, I, is, a, I, this I, is the top secret list adam rank list Hold on. Where I I got it on my Google. I'm so ingrained in that. Like now, I look okay. Like hopefully, Google. someone didn't uh, hack my boy's list. Don't get into my list, people. One of the things, uh, a couple of tips I will give out to anybody is like the number one thing I can tell anybody before you're drafting. And remember, when my boy Adam puts the glasses on, he's not playing. No, this is like when Homer Simpson puts his glasses on. Right. He becomes exactly. increasingly smarter. Exactly. I I really love. I I know that I. For some reason, I had noticed a little bit of a trend in a lot of my drafts that I was doing with, you know, people. I'm like, hey, I've noticed like CD Lamb, like people don't ignore him, but I don't think that he was getting enough love right. as many people thought as, as I would have expected. And then right. everybody came after me, like, oh, he's go. And again, it's the he's go. I, I'm I, I understand your league. You 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 draft with pros. Right. Most people draft with working professionals that don't spend as much time in the fantasy world as we do. And for whatever exactly. reason, they're not drafting CD lamb, which I think that is a mistake, but I will tell you, I still love Chris Olave. I think that he has an opportunity to really step forward this season with right. Derek Carr. He's a guy that I would, again, when you're sitting there a little bit later watching how he falls, I think Chris right. Olave is a player that I have a lot of confidence in. I really like Jackson Smith and Jigba which I know will shock a lot of people, but when you look at his career at Ohio State, his best seasons happened when he was with Garrett Wilson. He was with uh, Jamison Williams, Chris Olave. Jeez, who I just, yep. Who's this yep. talking about? He outshone all those guys. So when you have DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, who are fantastic players, right. I'm not downgrading them at all, but I am taking some... This Jackson Smith and Jigba is a player that I'm not leaving my draft without that uh, as long as I can help it. And you know what? I This is kind of weird, too. And I know that Kyler Murray's not going to be playing right. uh, for quite some time, but I think Marquise Hollywood Brown is going to be such a targets monster right. for a team that is going to be losing a lot of games. And I know that right. they, got Colt, they got Colt McCoy going in there, and there will be people 
yeah. who when when that's when the season goes on, I guarantee you, the Cardinals will win some games they shouldn't win, and then all these all these columns will come out and be like, you know, maybe the Cardinals are better off with I like, oh my God, don't say things like this. But he's a capable quarterback who can get the ball to his wide receivers. Exactly. And I think that I think there's an 80. I I gotta check the ADP. But I think that Marquise Oliver Brown is somewhere like the the wide receiver thirty six. I which, think uh, that's what I. Uh, it, he was around the th- he was around the se- late second or third third round. Uh, you know, he was he was right there. You know, up front and around those rounds. Um, yeah. But you know, obviously, I was also gonna say that you know, I definitely think Lockett's gonna be. Better. I feel like he's gonna perform more than DK this year. Um, I definitely believe. Um, you know, you know, Cooper Cup is obviously oh, he's going to be top three again. Yeah, um, you know, just Stafford is going to be, you know, needs to stay healthy. But I mean, there's a, there's a, you know, I, I feel like my boy, man, Terry. I think Terry is going to definitely. Uh, Terry McLaurin, love, love Terry McLaurin. Oh yeah, that's my dude, and I think he definitely is going to be, uh, you know, top ten. Uh, you know, he's just underrated, man. Not much people talk about him, but I feel like you know how is going to be slinging the ball, man. So yeah. So let's see how that goes. But hey, I mean, I mean, I'm talking about I feel like one of the biggest you know explanation points this year is going to be really Garrett Wilson, man. I mean, he yeah. what what he was doing last year, the way he was playing last year, now with Aaron Rodgers there, man. Man, it's it's going to be a way different uh scenario going on. But I mean, there's a there's a lot of question marks too, man. I mean, if you okay, you second round. Yeah. Okay. You you got the you okay, let's say you're in a 12 minute league or something, you know. Mm-hmm. And you you're on the clock and you see Derrick Henry. Ooh. What are we talking? Are we talking about half point PPR, full point PPR? I we don't are, mind. We are talking about PPR. Let's talk let's say PPR cuz a lot of people that's what a lot of people are doing nowadays. Yeah. It, 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 PPR is very popular and I know that some people are trying to make points per first down a thing. Right. This will be, this is my piece of advice uh, for everybody. There's two things I think everybody needs to know when right. they're going into their draft. Number one, know your league scoring system. This is paramount to anything, to making you a successful fantasy football player. Know your league scoring system. I play exactly. my, my two, my league of record and my second city league. Both of these leagues heavily weight the quarterback position. Quarterback touchdowns are worth six points. Interceptions are minus one. There's bonuses for 300, 400, 500 yards. When you hear fantasy analysts talk about waiting on a quarterback, if your league is structured in a way that heavily favors the quarterback, you right. got to dive in on your quarterback a little bit earlier. And that leads exactly. to my and that leads to my second point. So as long as you know the rules, understand. Right. The second thing. When you play in these leagues with your boys, after a while, you'll start to notice their tendencies. I It, it becomes like playing poker. You're right. not drafting. You're, you're kind of drafting against people. Like my exactly. friends, the DePaulo brothers, who I talk about all the time, I know how they draft. So I know that if they're behind me yep. and, and you're in a situation where you're like, I know that I know that neither one of these guys like Derrick Henry. Right. So if I'm sitting there and I have the, let's say I have the uh, the 10th pick, Yep. In the in the second round. We're in the back right. end. Derrick Henry stumbled. If I know that the two guys behind me don't like Derrick Henry, and I know right. they don't draft, or even like looking at who they've drafted, like, oh, both these guys have to draft wide receivers. Exactly. I know that I can wait and let him slide and be like, okay, I'll take the risk on it. I'll take a wide receiver and hope that he slides to me. Right. So I think that whenever you put out these questions of like, would you take a guy here or there? A lot of it becomes you got to start playing the board and you got to start playing your friends. And if you're in a league where you don't know anybody, that's a little bit different. Go on your own evaluation, but right. study your friends. Don't no. drink and don't drink. Don't smoke. Don't drink. <laughs> man, some of these dudes, man. Some of these people, dudes. People level head because then you can just kind of like, I sit there, I crack open a beer that I don't touch and I will, it'll just be sitting in front of me and people, and you know, I'm walking around being social, nothing. And then after the draft, I'll throw a couple down, but no, I, I keep a level head about me. Keep my wits Man, about me. And everybody else. Funny you stand. said that, Adam, because last year, uh, you know, the winner for my league, Bam, before before the draft started, he's like, Man, let me take a couple of shots. Yeah. And he's the one that won the league. 
he's the one that won the chip last year, man. So that that thing was that was really crazy right there. And yeah. um, but definitely, I mean, you I mean draft draft day, man, you have to be in the corner, man. You just gotta be by yourself, man, try to focus as much as you can. And you know, you yeah. gotta make you know, you gotta get one of those uh, you know, those little Tindo attended things you put in front of the laptop screens, man, because a lot of oh my know, gosh. Well, it's funny because my friends will watch the shows and they watch podcasts and they'll hear me like, they'll right. watch this. And they'll be like, all right, Garrett Wilson. Like I, I end up losing out on players that who I like, really I love. Like, man, this, this, this might be a little danger to both of us, love but it. hey, but, but you and me, we legends, man. We overcome, we, we overcome we have, obstacles. We have a Hippocratic oath, like doctors. Exactly. Where we're, we're legally, we're morally obligated Exactly. to help people and if it yeah. doesn't help us in the long run and people steal like last year it actually worked out of my benefit last year because in my second city league my friend beverage dave who right. uh he's one of the guys who helps run circa okay and um he's like the evp of circa i don't know i'm getting his title wrong but right so he he knew how much i loved kyle pitts and he took him right in front of me right. and kyle pitts ended up ruining his season and this is why i got i got i got i got to yeah, the finals and lost was, yeah but like sometimes it works out in our favor. So I mean, dude, look, I mean, like like you were saying, we're doctors, man. I mean, you, yeah. you can definitely tell me some of the crazy championships you won, but I could tell you a few right here. I mean, two years ago, man. I mean, I drafted Christian McCaffrey first round. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, that was a year he kept getting hurt and stuff like that. And you know, I just gave him away. Championship game, brother. I had no running backs, nothing. Yeah. Guess who I started, man? Like I said, I started Boston Scott. Of course, yeah. And, he was, I, yeah. And, and, and the other one was Jared Patterson. Oh yes, that game when they were uh, Eagles versus uh, you know the Commanders at that time. And I'm like, you know what, man? You you we know the game, right? And you know I came out with the win. But who yeah. in the world, right? An ordinary fancy player, you know, you know that's not us is definitely not going to do that. You know, yeah. they're not going to start Jared Patterson and Boston. Well, listen, to, listen to us. That's what we do. We help people out in those situations. Exactly. I mean, that, like we, that was, you, you go ahead, brother. What you're saying? No, I was going to say, I always have these conversations with people who, uh, who produce the NFL fantasy live show. Cause they're always right. like, they're, they're into showing highlights and they're into right. showing. And I'm like, we, I know that you don't like, Jarek McKinnon isn't the sexiest name in the NFL, but like we got to talk about this guy because right. he's the guy who helps people win fantasy championships. Exactly. And I mean, that boy, he lit it up last year, you know, at the end. I mean, Jarek McKinnon, I'm sure he won many championships last year. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I didn't make it to the championship last year, but mm -hmm. I did have him on my team, though. Um, but, um, you know, I was going to ask you, well, what are the uh, one of the memorable championships you won? Uh, I'm sure there's a lot, but what, what what's one of the ones that kind of sticks out? I will I will throw it back to in, in talking about Aaron Rodgers is um, two instances in the NFL Fantasy Live League is the first one right. I drafted Peyton Manning his first year in Denver. It right. wasn't his 55 touchdown season, but he did throw 37 touchdowns. He had 4,600 yards in uh, his first season in Denver, but he was such a stud that you right. ended up drafting him. Like Drew Brees was the best fantasy quarterback that year, but I think that Drew Brees faltered in the fantasy playoffs, if I'm remembering this correctly. Peyton right. Manning was a stud throughout the whole year. Yep. And so I had him, and because I drafted him in the 12th round, right. I had a I, – I just went out there and I steamrolled everybody right. and won. I also – the best team that I ever drafted. A lot of times you draft a team and then you look at the end of the season and you're like, oh my God, this team's completely different. Right. Patrick Mahomes' first year as a starter, I drafted this team. It wasn't necessarily just Patrick Mahomes. Right. It was this team that I drafted that pretty much started for me the whole year. I ended up going like 14 and two, whatever it was. I lost maybe two games. Okay. And uh, I remember this specifically because Matt Money Smith, who was the host of our show at the time, Right. Notice that I had not drafted a quarterback. And this is, again, this is knowing your league scoring. I know that everybody in this league only drafts one quarterback. They all draft them eighth round or later. I was going to wait. And it was just going to be a thing. I knew who I wanted to pick and nobody wanted him. So we go to, and it's the, the very last round. Matt Money Smith is looking at my board and he goes, you don't right. have a quarterback. He goes, I know who you want. 
and I'm taking him. And he started laughing and he drafted Philip Rivers. Oh, and I said, Lord. I said, okay. And uh, I drafted Patrick Mahomes. And uh, one of the guys, as he was leaving the rooms, just looked at me and he's like, yeah, good luck with that. And then took off. And uh, I went 14 and two or whatever it was. I lost two games. Oof, I'm t- man, that now that right there. I mean, dude, see, it just comes back to, you know, th- this stuff just comes easy to us, man. You know, yeah. it, just, it just comes easy to us. And I mean, and, sim- and similarly, when we when we stack Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers this year right? and we win, uh, I can't wait to rub that in everybody's face. Right. Exactly. And then on top of that, man. Doesn't matter PPR, not PPR, whatever the case have you. First two players, what are you doing? No, oh. I'm going back I, again. CMC is my guy. CMC, Justin Jefferson. But Jamar. would you do two? Would you do two wide receivers, or would you kind of split it up? Would you do one wide receiver, one running back? How how what would you think? There's a lot of people who play hero RB, which means right. like you draft one stud, whether it's uh, Christian McCaffrey, it could be right. Nick Chubb, Saquon right. Barkley. A lot right. of people. Love Bijan Robinson, and then right. you draft like six wide receivers. Right. If I draft Christian McCaffrey, I'm probably going to do that. If I get Nick Chubb, I'm probably going to load up with wide receivers the rest of the way. Right. I don't mind going wide receiver, wide receiver. And I right. think that if you miss out on the elite running backs at that point, like at the end of the first round, and you're like, "Well, Garrett Wilson and Tyree Kill, come on down," I'm right. very comfortable doing that. Exactly. Hey, um, Adam, you know, we can't we can't give too much information out now. So, you know, yeah, fantasy wise, I think that, you know, we got to keep it to a limit. You know what I'm saying? We we just gave it. everyone a little you taste it. You know what I mean? So, a little bit. Th- you know, that was a great conversation about fantasy. Now, I know, you know, I'm kind of kind of going to end it with this, but I know you're a Browns oh, yeah. fan. man. I mean, Bears. Uh, a Bears fan. Where were you, man? When Cody Parkey missed that field goal. Ah. I was uh, I was in my living room. My son was oh, how old would he have been? He's maybe he was yeah, he'd be over a year. I had my son in my arms, and I was sitting there. And then Cody Parkey makes it. I could see that Doug Peterson had signaled for the timeout, so I didn't even flinch. And then um, I was just like, I told my boy, I said, "This is what your life is going to be like." Cody Parkey is going to miss this field goal and life is going to suck forever for you as a sports fan. And uh, that's the way he's been. Uh, although he's now trying to root for the Dodgers because he's, oh he's already, de- he's already decided at four years old that he needs to be a front runner. Man. And uh, it, at some point I can't stop him. I'm like, yeah, you might be better off. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, man, when that happened, man, I was like, man, I'm not, man, I'm not going to, you know, bother Adam, man. I ain't gonna ah. text him my condolences, man. I mean, well, you saw the damn uh, mascot. The way he would, he would look. He looked like oh. he was having fun. He was just like falling down and getting up and falling down again. I was like, man, he take this as a joke, man. This that was serious. Yeah, yeah you know? I did. I did not appreciate that part of it from the mascot. Yeah, I was like, with the mask. I'm like, mascot, you. That's not funny, man. He was acting like it was a comedy scene or something. But yeah, man. what do you like? He put that on his reel. Yeah, and, uh, I remember that. I was like, like hey, I'm, look at me. Look at me. I'm I'm telling you. Hey, Adam Rake, man. I appreciate you coming down here and um, you know, being in this podcast with me and you know, telling some, you know, some of these uh new upcomers in uh fantasy a uh, little you know, little tips and you know, what have you, you know. And yeah, no. Coming, yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate you, hater. Um, I listen, I, I'm a big fan, so I appreciate you having me on. We'll have to return. I, I'm going to have to ask you for a return volley at some point. We'll bring you on the sick podcast with Adam Rank. We won't necessarily talk Chicago Bears, but we'll do a little fantasy, a little fantasy lowdown at some point this season and chop it up and have have a good time. But thanks so for much sure. for thinking of me, and uh, I really appreciate you having me on. Definitely, I appreciate it, Adam Rank. Guys, go ahead and follow him on uh, Instagram at Adam Rank, and uh, you know, stay tuned for more podcasts, man. I appreciate it.